Hey everyone, how's it going? Today is day 11, I think. It's been a, uh, almost two weeks since I've been uh, doing this whole unemployment project. Um, so far, things have been going pretty well. Uh, I haven't gotten terribly store crazy yet. I've had some time to really get invested in some different hobbies and interests. The first one that comes to mind is uh, reading. I've been doing a whole lot of reading, making a, a good amount of uh, progress in uh, this textbook right here. Um, it seems like biology has been one of my uh, up and coming interests. And at the current rate I'm going, which is about a, a chapter a day, I should be done with this textbook in uh, probably the next month or so. So, uh, in addition to that, uh, been looking at a variety of other different uh, resources. Uh, really, just going along with the whole survival theme and uh, finding any sort of other. Uh, interesting topics that might be useful for uh, any sort of self-reliance, personal enrichment type uh, activities. Um, another thing that I thought was kind of interesting was the uh, this uh, army field manual for uh, medics. Uh, it, it kind of ties in with the whole idea of me looking for health insurance and what to do in that kind of situation. So I thought that if I were to study up, then I could literally be able to take care of my own health if it came to that situation. I'm hoping it won't, but if it does, then I feel a little bit more comfortable being able to handle that. Um, with that being said, um, I'll just go ahead and get on to the topic that I am planning to cover today. In last week's episode, we touched over the ideas and wonders of water. We talked about how you can use that as both a food and a drink. And to me, the natural progression just seemed to be that we should talk about bread this time. I mean, uh, bread is pretty much your default idea of food, if you don't count pasta from what we covered last week. But, seeing as it's one of the next, uh, say, regarded things in Robinson Crusoe, I think I'd go ahead and uh, touch on it. If you've never actually done any sort of baking, you might not realize just how easy it is to make bread. Sure, you've got your basic ingredients. Flour, egg, some kind of oil. Probably some milk involved in there as well. But it can get as simple or complicated as you want. For you, for now, I think I'd just go ahead and show you just how easy it is to make some kind of bread type product. And all you need is that right there. That's it. Need some flour, some oil. Granted, this isn't going to be the most beautiful loaf of bread that you've ever seen, but it is going to become some kind of functional tortilla. So let's just go ahead and get started on that. First thing you're going to want is some kind of vessel to mix this in. It doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, I think the main idea you want is something that's going to be large enough to hold all of your ingredients. Again, it kind of depends on what you're going for. If you want to make a lot of bread type product, then you're going to want to have a lot of space. Uh, this is the, per the first thing that I pulled out of the cabinet, so we'll just make our product to fit. Alright, seeing as we have uh, only two ingredients, you can start out with whichever one that you want. Uh, I prefer to you 
work with my wet ingredients first, so I'll just go ahead and throw that in. If you uh, have milk or egg or some other small seasoning like sugar or salt, that's usually about the time that I put that in, blind it up really well. And once that's done, then I go ahead and gradually start adding in my flour. I personally am not using any sort of measurements or anything. I'm really going for some kind of eyeballed consistency. If it seems like I've gone too far in one direction with one ingredient, then I just bounce it out with a little bit more of the other. One thing that I do like about working with flour is that if it seems like you've added too much, you might have actually added just enough because this stuff will blend in really well. Again, it's all about making the type of uh, consistency that you're looking for. It doesn't have to be exact or anything. As long as it's edible to you, then that's all that really matters. Go ahead and uh, find yourself some kind of mixing utensil. You can use a, a whisk or something fancy if you want. If you don't know, a whisk looks like that. I don't typically prefer to use this. I sometimes do, but it's just diff more difficult to clean, so usually a fork or a knife is good enough for me. So now I'm just going to start gradually combining the two. And this process might take a few minutes. In the end, the kind of uh, end product you're looking for is something that looks like dough. If you've never actually made your own, you might have some idea of what dough looks like. Just kind of aim for that. A little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. This probably wasn't the best bowl to use with all the different contours in it, but yeah, you, sometimes you just have to make do with what you have. Okay, that's looking like some kind of consistent dough type thing. But uh, what, we're wanna, what we're trying to do is go for something that we can actually hold in our hands and have it not stick to everything. So I'm just going to gradually keep adding some flour to that and hopefully it turns out a little bit drier. If yours ends up looking a little bit crumbly, don't worry. It eventually mushes all together. On second thought, you might not want to use a knife for drier mixes. It's pretty helpful for wetter batter, like making pancakes, but uh, you know, making a, a dry loaf is not exactly easy to work with. At some point, we're going to want to take a hold of our dough and uh, actually start really working it together. We want all those different, uh, what are they called? We want all those different gluten molecule molecules to we'll just kind of get really bonded together and help the whole thing stick together. My dough bowl looks a little dry, so I might add a little bit more uh, moisture. Okay, that feels a lot better. It does kind of a pain when it's uh, sticking to everything and it's really wet, but if it's too crumbly and it doesn't see together, then that's not helpful either. Get all these other little tiny bits. If I remember correctly, I think that's about the consistency we're going for. Right now it feels a little bit like uh, Play-Doh or clay, something like that. Um, this will probably look and feel a little bit different uh, if you were to add different ingredients like egg or milk or you know baking powder or soda or what have you. But uh, I just wanted to keep things simple for this time, just mainly for uh, A, for making a point, and B, for just doing a, a basic demonstration. I think once everyone's done a basic baking uh, process, maybe one time, they might feel a little bit more comfortable to move on to something else. I apologize to anyone who's horrified at the consistency of this. I'm doing this completely off of memory. All right, we've got uh, 
something of a basic dull ball right here. What you're going to want to do next is, first off, make sure you've got a clean rolling surface. And then just take your dough, apply it to the surface. You may or may not want to sprinkle it with flour and then just go ahead and start rolling it down. Actually, for this case, I think I'll just go ahead and uh, cut it in half, make two, just so I've got, uh, I guess, possibly two different examples to show as far as an end result goes. The stickiness doesn't seem to be so bad right now, but uh, if you do have the sort of problem with your dough sticking to anything and everything, then, then just uh, add more flour. X is a good uh, barrier in between different surfaces. All right, cool. We've got our two dough balls. Now we want to do is take our dough balls, turn them into dough plates, I guess. We're making our tortillas right now. If you have some somewhat professional, suitable equipment, you can go ahead and use that, but an ordinary glass is going to work just as well. Okay, something's a mess. Seems like my dough is not sticking together pretty well. It usually turns out better than that. Let's just go ahead and try a small experiment with having a bit more flour in this one and then we'll just leave this one alone. Actually, we probably know how that one's going to turn out, so we might adjust that one later. It's a bit less shiny, but it seems to be staying together pretty well. Let's try this again. Let's add some flour on top to keep it from sticking to our rolling device. Okay, that looks something like a tortilla. Plus this little broken part. Let's go ahead and take care of this other one right now. Made sure to add flour this time. It's okay guys, I fixed it. No, I remember it turning out a little bit better than this. Let me try something real quick. All right, I'm sorry, I was wrong. You also need a third thing called water. Well, it definitely feels a lot stickier. That's uh, the stickiness I was talking about. So make sure you add flour to everything. Okay, let's try that one more time. There we go. These are certainly not the prettiest tortillas I've ever made, but uh, I'm pretty satisfied with how they turned out. Next thing I'm going to do now is uh, go ahead and pull out a frying pan, cook these up, and see how they taste. If you are not familiar with frying pans, they typically look something like this. They also typically come with something like that. We're going to do it now. So I've turned this on. I'm going to add some uh, oil or butter in there. It's up to you. We're then going to take that, put that in there, and cook them up for a little bit. You could try cooking them without the oil, but I typically don't tend to get a even cook and I get little burn spots on my pancakes. I understand that tortillas are different from pancakes, but Oh, you know, they look pretty similar, so I imagine I would get the same sort of output. So I'll just go ahead and add oil in here anyway. We'll let that heat up, and then we'll just start putting them in. 
There goes number one. I probably should have cleaned the bacon grease out of here. Oh well. A little bit wet. We'll just call it extra juicy. I think this guy's getting close to done. Go ahead and put him on a plate. Here goes number two. While waiting for this guy, let's go ahead and give this one a try. Definitely tastes fried. A little bit more flaky than I was expecting. Still tastes a little bit kind of doughy, but I guess it could be worse. Now that I think of it, it almost kind of tastes like pie crust. It's not too bad. Probably go with some uh, jelly or something. Yeah, I think if I would have added the water beforehand, this would have stuck together a lot better. That looks a little bit closer to what a tortilla should look like. Oh, I just realized I forgot to add salt. Oh well. This side doesn't look quite so great, but on the bright side, you guys now know what to look for whenever you try it. Don't repeat the same mistakes I did. Oh, well, here's what I ended up with. It's not very uh, foldable. Reminds me more of a biscuit than it does a tortilla. But uh, if this is anything like the last one, it's at least edible. And I think, if nothing else, edibility is somewhat beneficial. That's what I think so, anyway. And hey, uh, if nothing else, at least we learned something.